PowerPoint 2010. In this tutorial, we're going to talk about the uses of the transition ribbon. So we're in the home ribbon to start with, and we're going to click right here on the transitions ribbon. And you've got some options here of some things you can do. The first one is the preview. If you click that button, it's going to preview the transition for that slide. There isn't a transition set for this one much. Well, no, there's a cut is set for this, but it's not really doing a lot. You don't really see a whole bunch. Um, one thing to keep in mind with creating your transitions is that the transition is always the effect that will happen as that slide comes onto the screen. Um, if you mouse over these, you can uh, usually see a preview of the different options. Click on it and it'll show you what that one will look like. Usually as you hover over them, they'll sometimes show you the preview. Um, we're going to take a look though. You can set these up and again it's sometimes uh, difficult to, dis to, to see a lot of effect on some of these unless you've got some graphics on the screen. I'm going to pick a pretty uh, bold one. This uh, new one for the 2010 is Honeycomb. So you can see that's pretty pretty bold and that's how that one will come on the screen. Once I've set a transition that I like, I've set that for that individual slide that's selected. And you can tell that by the star that's there next to the, to the number. In the outline mode, you don't really see any uh, indication of the transition effect. But in the slide view, you can see this right here that tells you that that's got a transition effect set to it. Once you've done that, there's some effect options you can set on some of the different slides. It's another new one for 2010. I'll go back to Honeycomb. Um, each one of those will be different and, and unique for the specific transition. But there's also an option here to choose a sound. Now these sounds are pretty simple. They're just the basic sounds. that come with the computer. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, but those are just ones that come with it. You'll also notice clear at the bottom there's one that says other sound. This other sound will let you choose a sound from your computer, but it needs to be a WAV file, a WAV file, so keep that in mind. I'm going to click cancel on that because I'm really not going to do that. I am going to set a sound. My favorite sound is still just a click. So I'm simulating the old projector style um, presentations. You can adjust the duration. I'm not going to adjust that because I'm going to let it set the way it is. Then you have two other things over here I want to talk about before we talk about applying this. One is to do advance on a mouse click. That means anytime you click the mouse it will advance to the next slide. If you're going to set up your slideshow so that students are going to use it at a computer, you would probably want to turn this off, but that's kind of a different feature. You can also set this to go automatically after some number of seconds it will advance to the next slide. That might be useful if you're setting this up on a, on a TV in a library or in a, an office where you're going to have a slideshow that kind of has announcements on it. That would be useful. You can then, if you leave both of them on, you can speed up the slideshow by using the mouse. Uh, if you turn this one off, it'll only um, advance on the automatic timings. This is something you kind of have to experiment with and play with a lot. Now the last button that I want to show you is this Apply to All button. This Apply to All button lets you set these particular um, settings to the entire slideshow. And what I suggest you do is use that button. Click it and you'll get a consistent transition for every slide and every slideshow. And if you have a specific slide, you notice they all have the little star on them now, that you want it to be different, then choose that one or two. And we'll set this one to be vortex. And we'll look at the effect options really quick to see if there's some, some things we want to change on it. Okay, let's have it come from the bottom. So the vortex will do that. So let's take a look at our slideshow. Um, and instead of just using the preview button, which will let us see that effect there again in this editing pane, I prefer to use these tools down here. And I like the slideshow button. You can also shoot, use the slideshow ribbon to go to the full screen from the beginning or from, this, from the current slide. So now as I use my arrow keys or my mouse button to, to advance through the slideshow, you see that effect is uniformly and consistently placed on each of the slides. And as I mentioned, it kind of makes it easier for people to navigate through. The only one that will be different is when we get down to the one that we chose the vortex transition on. And that 
that's the one. That's a different effect on it. So you can see it's kind of nice. We have these new pretty bold effects that are available from Microsoft PowerPoint 2010. And that's some of the ways you can use those features on the transition ribbon. You can also um, choose from these additional ones and set up your specific settings the way you'd like them.